Ray here. Today on the workbench, we are going to um, take a look at the PV6505 uh, Plus uh, 112 Combo. Uh, I recently picked this up. It's a, uh, from what I understand from reading through, it is a 2017 model. Uh, it comes, it has the stock tubes in it. Um, power tubes are Ruby, which I found to be pretty consistent. I've seen a lot of the different uh, PV6505 for some reason they used the uh, rubies. I've heard a lot of different things about You know a lot of different rumors about where the tubes come from some people say they have assortment of different tubes I've seen a lot of rubies and then a lot of JJ's in them But I've also seen some electroharmonics and different types of tubes. So I kind of preference uh, uh, have a preference to uh, certain types of tubes and stuff so um, today we're going to put some new tubes in this bad boy here, uh, some new power tubes as well as some new uh, preamp tubes. So uh, let's get okay, started. As you can see here, as I'm kind of holding the camera, I apologize if it's kind of shaky. We're going to take the two screws here and then the two screws over on this side off. And then you can see inside, if I can kind of show you in there, you can see the two power tubes are right there. And then a little bit further back there, you can see the casings that go over the 12AX7s or uh, the preamp tube. So what we're going to go ahead and take this little casing off the little protective plate here and get in so we can see the tubes. One of the things that can be a challenge on this amp, sorry for shaking, trying to hold the camera here. So one of the things that can be a bit of a challenge is taking this back plate off. Uh, a secret to that is take a screwdriver Put it in that bottom crease right there between uh, where the back panel and the bottom of the frame actually meet up. And what you can do is just kind of gently put it in, kind of wedge it in there, and then slowly pull it back. And you can see you can walk, kind of walk it out. Um, it's a good way that the screwdriver will kind of grab the Tolex as you can kind of pull it back. Um, just kind of gently stick it in not too far and just kind of walk it out a little bit and just kind of give through the whole back, but that's how you can pull it out. It's in there pretty snug, and I've seen a few different um, questions out on the internet about how do you do this. This is what works best for me, so uh, give it a try, see if that okay, works Okay, now where we're at, we've got our back cover off, and um, again, that can be a little tricky. Um, I recommend kind of maybe getting a couple screwdrivers and wedging them in. Uh, kind of prying a little bit and then slide the screwdriver in and pry a little bit more off. It can be a little tricky. Also noticed, um, I didn't see a lot of this out there, but if you can see the speaker from here, this is the, the, the Sheffield, apparently the Sheffield 1200 speaker that goes in this amp. And if I'm not mistaken, I can see zero markings on the back or front of this amp. I went through with a with a flashlight, I couldn't see anything, to be honest with you. Um, there's some markings, 336, 153, which is on the actual speaker itself, but I didn't see anything, which I thought was kind of surprising. Um, I mean, zero markings. Uh, most of my other speakers, anywhere from the Celestians, I have another uh, Sheffield, actually, uh, that actually is very marked, you know, has the, the standard Sheffield logo and all that, but uh, nothing on this one here. Surprised to find that. So, uh, if you can see in here now, we've got the two rubies uh, that are currently in there. Now, if, I, if I've, uh, you know, found, if I've read correctly, uh, you know, uh, on different chat rooms and stuff, a lot of these amps come stock with the ruby uh, tubes right in them. So what we're gonna do is replace them. Um, I got a set here of the Tungsol uh, 6L6, uh, uh, 6L6 GC STRs that I picked up for this. We'll give that a try. And then I also picked up uh, a handful of these Tungsol uh, 12AX7s. I've had a lot of um, a lot of success with using those, especially in the V1 slot. Um, a lot of times I'll put a V1 in, uh, a, a Tungsol in V1, and then a JJ uh, in V2 through the rest of them a lot of times. Um, kind of thickens things up a little bit. Um, the Tungsol, again, being a little bit more of a, I'd say... Uh, gamey type tube uh, gives a little more uh, bite I would say if uh, uh, if I'm you know if I can say that about that it's, it's a pretty good uh, I like using that tongue saw 12 x 7 for a lot of my uh, heavier uh, gain amps uh, some of my Marshalls as well and um, a lot of times I'll use the actual Mesa tubes in say the rectifier 
Uh, I did that for a little while, but then found that you can use all sorts of different, so whatever works best for you. Uh, this being a PB, of course, uh, nothing saying that we can't uh, put in whatever we want. So uh, for the taking out the power tubes here, you just simply pull these little guys apart. You just kind of want to kind of pry them apart. It's kind of hard to get my fingers in there. Pry this bad boy out and this one out and just pull it down. There we go. So there is one <clears throat> of the rubies. Um, this amp isn't that old and it doesn't look like this tube is that worn. I'll probably hold on to these for a little while. Um, see kind of just in case maybe as a backup set or uh, perhaps if the tongue saws here don't uh, perform the way that I'm wanting them to, then I may put these back in. Um, they really have two kind of boxy areas. This one here being, of course, the cabinet where the speaker sits is completely isolated. There's not even any dust in here. So it's really sealed up uh, well. Um, and then, of course, the kind of chamber, if you will, up here, the head area um, is accessible once you just take that little screen off. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reach in here and take this. Uh, see if I can get my hand in here. Let me use my left hand. Let me take my watch off real quick. Uh, go ahead and reach back in here and take the tube cover off these. You just kind of push and twist and they pop right off. And they're pretty easy to get a hold of. Um, I recommend kind of pull gently and rotate. Kind of a twisting motion. Um, you don't want to twist too much. Just kind of a gentle uh, rotating motion uh, and it'll start to slowly come out. At first it'll feel like it's kind of tight. Um, just kind of slowly move it and rock it uh, in small circles and kind of switch direction if you will. This one's kind of tight. I can tell that there hasn't been a lot of uh, speaker, I mean a tube adjustment on this one here. So of course um, looks like this one here they were using a ruby, a ruby uh, I can see the AC5 there, HG, which is actually um, one of their better tubes, to be honest with you. This is an actual, uh, one of their higher kind of gain quality tubes that I've used in some of my Marshalls. This is actually a pretty good tube. Um, I'm going to hang on to that one. I don't think that was a stock tube that they put in, to be honest with you. So I'm kind of, I was, to be honest, I was kind of expecting just to see some JJs in there, to be honest with you. Um, of course, the Ruby power tubes, yes, but kind of surprised to see the uh, the Ruby HD tube in there. So let me kind of reach back in here and see if I can get my hand on. There's not a lot of room back in here. Uh, reach down in here, take this cover off. Again, just kind of push up and pull out. Um, you probably know this, I don't have to tell you, but it's really not recommended that you do anything other than really the tubes, if, if, unless you know what you're doing when you're working in these amps. There's a lot, a lot of voltage that is stored, even when the power, the amp is unplugged and turned off. Um, oh, that's another ruby. It looks like this thing has perhaps a full set of rubies in here. So, um, I don't know. That's interesting. I may... I don't know. That's a, it's a tough call. I, I kind of, I, I mean, kind of see what Ruby that is. If that's another HG, then those are pretty good tubes. So I'm going to kind of go through the tubes here and take a look and see what we have. I won't bore you with that. I'll kind of speed through that and uh -huh. kind of tell you what we have. So got the other tubes in. Replace some of those other 12AX7s. I'm, I'm going to hold on to the, uh, the Rubies there. They're pretty good tubes, to be honest with you. I've popped in the tongue saws and kind of gave a check through the different ones. I've popped this one new tongue saw in and I've taken the Ruby power tube out and now I'm going to pop in the second matched here tongue saw. Go ahead and pop this bad boy in. There we go. And just kind of push it on up. That one went in much easier than the other one for some reason. The other one I had to wiggle a little bit and I like to kind of get them in there, make sure that they're in, kind of move them around, make sure they're flush on all sides. And those bad boys are in nice and tight. You don't want to have one, you know, something kind of not all the way in or kind of not inserted all the way up. But those are the two uh, tongue saws now. They are inserted in and should be ready to go. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
put this back cover back on and see if we are uh, how they sound. So let's check it out. Another little tip I always try to remember is when I'm putting these screws back in here, remember that you are screwing back into from you know wood to wood. Um, when you're tightening the screws up, make sure that you don't tighten them too tight. You really don't need to cinch down on them too hard. Um, if you do, you run the risk of stripping the screw and then basically the back will not seal. Now this back seals up pretty nicely. They've got it very snug. The Tolex is very snug into the, uh, into the frame uh, of the back of the speaker. But on my DSL, uh, my DSL 40, see I had taken the back off so many different times from be, to because you take the back off to adjust the uh, tubes and I was always playing with tubes and I put a couple different speakers in and just over time through using the screws I stripped out a couple of the different screws uh, and had to go to a larger screw screw and it, the back didn't fit as snug on the DSL uh, as this one does uh, so just kind of be careful when you're putting these screws back in not to tighten them up too much and last but not least Go ahead and put the back plate uh, back on this. Go ahead and just put your little screws in. One. And it's just four little screws. The other back plate that goes on the back of the amp there has, uh, what is that, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little screws that you're going to put in. And this little plate here just has four. So you just go ahead and put those little bad boys back in. And once you have that in and your back plate in, go ahead and plug it in and give it a try and see how the new tubes sound. So let's give it a try. All right, so we had a chance to put the power tubes and preamp tubes in the PV6505. And the uh, very first thing I noticed was a lot, uh, first thing it w was the, the volume. It seemed that there was a, uh, a little bit more volume coming out of the amp. And I don't know if the other tubes are starting to get bad, I noticed as soon as I turned the amp on, I had to turn the volume down a little bit. I don't know if I bumped it, but definitely stronger note articulation coming out of the amp. I noticed better um, gain without the microphonics coming through, without the crackle. Uh, a lot of lead notes, I noticed there'd be kind of this ghost notes that were coming out of it. I wasn't really sure if that was a result of the power tubes or maybe some of the older preamp tubes. I'm not 100% sure. I know most of the noises tend to come from preamp tubes um, and they start to go bad, although it's, from what I understand, it's fairly rare for a preamp tube to go bad. I honestly have only seen a few um, in the years I've been playing that have actually been bad. There are stories of JJ's and some other tubes coming. Um, you know, you get them and then they're, they're bad, but I've been very lucky with my tubes. I, I rarely have any problems with any of the different tubes I've had. Um, so I'm happy so far with the Tungstall power and the, the preamp. Um, lots of power on tap. Um, actually was able to kind of back down. Um, I was using my um, uh, tube screamer, just a volume boost, and I was even able to go down a little bit of that. I noticed also that um, I was able to, uh, I had to use my decimator previously with the rubies in there a bit more. I had to be a little more aggressive with it. And with the new Tung Sol power and preamp tubes, I noticed I was able to back off a little bit and I didn't get as much feedback um, while I was playing. So I've been very happy with it. It's got a very... <laughs> tight responsiveness. I'm actually just playing through the amp. I'm not micing it through my DAW. I'm running it through Studio One, so the sound's gonna be as, as good. I am gonna do another video uh, testing different tubes uh, and kind of doing a comparison. Um, so we'll run it through the, the right way so you can hear it clear through my Studio One and using the mics and it through my DAW and everything. I just wanted to kind of hit a couple chunky chords. Um, I know you probably can't hear it as well. Um, but it, uh, the tubes sound really good. I've been really happy with it. Uh, again, I'm going to keep the, the stock speaker for now because I am able to run them through a series of different amps uh, through my 412. I've got a couple of the 2x12s and 4x12s that I kind of run through, but the Vintage 30 sound very good, which I'm actually playing through now. <laughs> running it through a 4x12 cabinet 
uh, with vintage 30s in it and um, sounds pretty good so thank you very much uh, for uh, checking out the uh, video here of us trying the uh, different tubes out uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, please leave them below I love getting your comments and uh, hearing your thoughts and different things and experiences that you've uh, had um, would love uh, to have you subscribe if you, if you haven't already and um, I will have more videos coming out soon. So thank you for joining, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you again soon.